Hello, Visionary, and welcome back to our channel. For those of you who are new, I'm super excited to get to know you. My name is Raquel Reyna of Raquel and Davidian Unleash Your Genius. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing a full class. So grab your notebooks, your pen, and your, and your paper, and get ready to go deep. It's a full hour long, so I'm just preparing you. Uh, also, I want to let you know, this is our monthly community call. We are going to be doing this on a monthly basis. You are invited to join in. There are details below on how you can join. There is a small fee for that. That's how we support our channel. That's how we grow. That's how we bring out the intel. A little caveat. I am talking to people throughout this class. It's a live class. So I'm going to be giving you the recording. It's a live class. I'm answering questions. I'm talking to people people. There's a whole group of our community on this call. The main focus is motivation, desire, and transference innocence. Okay, so we go deep into this. I appreciate all of your comments. I am going to set up the expectation. I am a line five. People project onto me, and this is the first time I'm bringing this intel out into the public arena. I've been studying this for a long time and, and, and researching, 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 experimenting, and so it's time to bring it out. But it is the first time I'm bringing it out, so I just want to make sure that you guys are aware of that. I'm going to go deep into the inner transformation, which is really my specialty. I can't wait to hear what your experience is and what motivation you are. This stuff is so powerful and so interesting. We will be doing the monthly community calls on the first Friday of every month. I will not be putting the rest of them on our public YouTube, um, but this is the first one and I wanted to share it with you guys and let you know what we're doing and invite you to join in to the community calls. It's where I can get to know you a little bit more, where I like to look at your charts personally, get to find out a little bit about, about your design and what your motivation is. It's super deep stuff, super fun, super juicy, and I can't wait to see you on the inside. Welcome everyone to our community calls. So I'm so excited about these calls and having everybody here and diving into this new intel. For those of you who missed my caveat, basically I want to set the expectations. I am a line five. I am a teacher. I'm also innocent. So I need to be here with no agenda and teach. Um, but at the same time, I need to make sure I set up my expectations. This is my first time bringing this intel out to the community. And so it's really important that <clears throat> I set up the expectations. I may say things a little off, but I can guarantee you that I'm going to transmit the um, powerful transformation that I've had with this work. That I can guarantee. So the intention for these calls all rise up together and the four radical transformations. And what I mean by this all rise up together is I want to lift everybody up to that place of being in our abundance, regardless of what we're seeing out there. Being in the place where we know and we trust that all of our needs are met. When you are vibrating in the frequency of abundance, then you open the door to possibility and to solutions. And when you open the door to possibility and solutions, then million dollar ideas or even hundred thousand dollars ideas or whatever the idea is can come in. But if we're focused on the problems, then we block out all of the ideas. So it's an important time to lift each other up, to know that we don't have to buy into the collective fear. We don't have to buy into the economic situation. I really truly do believe that the finances are from source. And as long as we can source that abundance every morning, every day, then we awaken to higher and higher states of frequency. So that's really important for me. The radical transformations are your human design. We are gonna, these calls, I'm gonna go through this stuff because this is what I'm learning. I have now finally started um, experimenting with diet, which I've never really believed. Um, but I have been doing that recently. And so we are going to be um, talking about all of the radical transformations. So you guys are getting all this hot off the press. 
Um, eventually this is going to probably turn into a deeper course or something, but for now, this is how this is going to be laid out. Um, will we receive a practice to call in the abundance each day? So all of you guys probably should have that now. Um, we're going to do that, um, exercise, um, before we start the class and then you'll have the recording and you can use that. And most of you guys have access to the Mystical Mindset Power Boost now, um, which I think is the prerequisite to kind of doing all of this stuff on a daily basis. Um, it really helps. There's great meditations in there. Um, but we're going to do that first as a group. We are going to do our centering process, which is what I call the inside job. And I like to start all of my groups this way. Only today we're going to do it a little bit deeper because this is going to be the foundation for this um, work that we're going to do in abundance. So what I like to do is I like to make sure that everyone's ready for this because here's what happens. When we all focus on our energy together, the energy amplifies. We all give to the community, we support the community, and we begin to rise the community up, which means that you'll be able to move out of fear. You'll be able to move more powerfully into possibility. So we're going to do this by creating the space. This space is going to be a powerful circle of intention. And so I need to make sure that everybody's ready for that. That's going to include closing your eyes and getting centered. So when you guys are ready for that just type a Y or a yes in the chat and once we've got everybody ready then we're gonna start Julia is a yes yes Lisa okay it's coming in fast Amy Faith Diana <laughs> Lauren I might have missed you guys Christopher oh it's Becca okay great she made it from the iPhone okay thank you Be Becca letting us know and Judy oh hey Judy and Judy's on the iPad okay good Thank you, and um, thank you, Davidian. Um, we just um, want to make sure that we know who's here. We're going to be inviting everyone into our um, into our Facebook group so we can share during the month. And the other thing that's really important about these calls is that all of our groups, all of our courses are here. Our level one, our level two, our level three, our YouTube course. The idea of the community and past clients and the idea of the community is that everyone gets to be with each other and know that when you're in the Facebook group that you can communicate with each other. Everyone here is experimenting and going through their process together. So it's a really important thing that we can all be communicating and working together before our next community call. Today we might go a little bit over while we're getting used to the energy of the group, um, but I wanna try and keep these as close to an hour as possible. Um, but it looks like everybody's ready. So what I'm gonna do is because it's a little distracting when we do this, I'm gonna turn the video off. Oops. So everyone's ready. And so what that means is everyone just come into a place of stillness and just allow yourself to be present and Let's center into the sacred moment that we're all creating as a group. This is powerful. When you come together with the intention of rising up, healing, and awakening, we begin to transform our inner world. And when we transform our inner world, we transform the projection of the outer world. So take a breath in with me now and scan the body and just get really present. I'm feeling the most incredible amount of warmth and love. And just feel that coming through the body, through every cell. Allow it to move through your bones and just get present. Open up the possibility as you breathe in this moment, you bring your mind into the state of stillness. We then begin to awaken into not just passenger consciousness, but into higher frequency consciousness. And in this higher frequency, we are connected to all that is. We are connected to every potential, every solution. And within that, we create our inner world and the abundance that we need in our lives by feeling it now and opening up to the possibility. 
So just rise up, don't let your mind, or if the mind wanders, that's okay, I should say. But just feel the expansion. Lift it up a little bit higher right now and just walk into the possibility Walk into the vibration and the frequency of possibility. What does that feel like? So just feel into the loving of life right now. Loving of this moment, of being here to learn, to grow, to create, to build new things in the brain by studying and being present. And just imagine the new pathways open as we do this. We are literally creating new pathways in the brain. So breathe in with me a little bit more. We're gonna go a little bit deeper. So just stay with me. I want you to feel the energy moving all the way through the body. So when you need to, if the mind wanders, come to the heart. And in the heart, we feel the love. So just for one second, imagine the frequency of love. Imagine a pet or your loved one, a child, something that opens your heart. And in love, we move out of anxiety, we move out of the fear, and we move into the infinite expansion, the infinite intelligence that lives within our bodies. So feel this for one minute, everyone. Just imagine this expanding. Let it move all the way through the body and all the way through the feet. And I want you guys to stay with me and just expand even more and just feel our light and our frequency just even expanding a little bit more. And with this abundance, imagine that it is opening every single idea it's opening the door to what new idea can provide more solution because right now I am in the frequency of wealth and everything is possible. Right now, I'm going to hold this. When we hold this, which we've already been doing as a group, we amplify that energy. We begin to turn around any past, any past idea, any past pattern, any past drama karma around the money not having enough not believing in um possibility buying into lack and what that feels like in the body is contraction so i want you to notice that and just set the intention right now that when i notice contraction in my day i will become aware of the contraction and i will open up to infinite possibility this is a choice we have this inner choice so feel that with me for a moment and what is the difference inside your body when you're full when you're expanded and when you're contracted and just notice it all right everybody now come back into the body get super present with me get super present and we're gonna dive into the intel for today so what is your motivation that is the question so let me first start out by sharing with you guys a little bit about what this motivation stuff is and how was that for you guys yeah okay thanks wow how oh, good i'm so glad that was centering was amazing it was big right can you guys feel this group oh my god you guys are powerful everybody is just really ah, oh <laughs> A lot of visualizations. Okay, good, good. So I'm so glad um, that you guys are feeling it. So what I want to do is share with you guys, what is this stuff? Okay, now as you guys know, I like to break this down so that it's, so that it's uh, simple, right? Because if you look, seeing the connections on the grid, oh my God, that's awesome. Great. My Oracle card today said, make a choice. The choice is lack contraction or abundance expansion brilliant i love that and that's exactly it it is a choice it's an inner choice we have that power within us 
So let's talk about what this means. Another caveat I have to this is I really do believe that you have to follow your strategy and inner authority before this stuff really makes sense. So you really have to be utilizing this and doing your design and following your design in order for motivation to take its lead in your life. It is beneath the surface, okay? The motivation is beneath the surface. So the strategy and authority is above the surface and the motivation is beneath the surface. Most people are living in their transference and this is what we're gonna be dancing with during these calls. Motivation, transference. This can also be seen as true self, not self but it's the deeper part of us. It's the part that drives us. It's the part that motivates us. It's so deep and powerful that it, it shook me to my core into every bone in my body as I began to understand how my transference was still living within me. Um, it, it, it truly has it, it created a shudder. And so the reason I'm, I'm, I'm sharing this with you is because people do not want to look at their transference. It's shocking. So I'm kind of setting that up for you guys as we go in. <laughs> it was for me anyways. Okay. So the four radical transformations are, and, and for, by the way, for those of you guys who are still new to this intel, um, remember that your strategy and authority is always first. It might be just stuff to keep in the back burner until it really starts to integrate. So in other words, sometimes, you know, when you read something or you're trying on new things, you might think about that um, and you might play with it a little bit and then slowly but surely it integrates and then you get like aha moments. Well, that's what's happened for me with these radical transformations, and that might be something that happens for you, possibly. So interesting, and yes, I can see how my transference drove me into the wrong direction and hurt me. It's so true, and that is exactly the dance we're going to dive into today. So the radical transformations are diet, how you digest food and environment, um, and which is where you're living. These things are called the PHS, the motivation, um, whoops, there we go. The motivation and the perception, how you perceive the world is called the um the rave psychology, okay? And all four of these are called the four radical transformations. And so that's sort of how we're gonna break this down. We're gonna go through all of this in these monthly calls, okay? So this is a really exciting for me um, because this stuff is literally so interesting. But just so you know, you guys are going to have, I'm gonna set up your expectations for this also. You're going to have a lot of questions, okay? I'm telling you, the mind is going to want to know all this stuff, and you're going to want to know it now, okay? Because that's just how the mind works. I'm going to set up the expectation for all of you guys as well that I'm not going to get to everybody's um, motivation today. We're going to do it step by step. Okay, so I want to just set you guys up, but I'm going to make sure you guys all know what your motivations are. You're going to know the basics, but we're going to go, we're going to dive into them in depth and we're not going to probably get to everybody's today. Just setting you guys up for that as well. Um, so the transference, no. So the transference is not one of the four. Now let me show you the next slide. It'll make more sense when you get the visual, okay? So know thyself. If you haven't been exper experimenting with the strategy and inner authority, this might be fun to know. But remember that strategy and authority is still the master, right? It's still the master. So um, again, regardless, and I think I spelled that wrong. Sorry about that, guys. Typo. Of what we talk about here, your, if your strategy says no, then listen to that first, okay? So this is not about someone telling you what to do. So in other words, like when we're not gonna do diet today, but when we do go into diet, 
you know, it, a lot of the things that people told me about my diet originally, like I could eat whatever I wanted um, as long as I did it in the dark, that was not true for me. I have food sensitivities. My body couldn't handle that. And I just immediately said no. And I'm splenic. And the spleen is going to say yes or no, right? So it wasn't correct for me. And the way they said it was like, you have to do this. And it's like, no, I don't. So in other words, no one's telling you what to do. We're diving deeper into a deeper level here. And then, of course, uh, the most important thing that you guys are empowered in your own strategy and inner authority, you're empowered to um, make your own decisions. And that's what the basis of all human design is. So this is another level that might create a greater, a deeper level of questioning and deepening who you are. Uh, but it's not for me to tell you what to do. It's not for anyone to tell you what to do, right? So it's always about what you need to do for you, okay? I'm, I know, I'm telling you, this stuff like is so unbelievably exciting, especially right now given these times. We have to know who we are because there's so much information out there that we don't know what to believe. Uh, that is conflicting. And I also think we have a lot of ways to create our own realities right now. So if we're not looking out there and we're only looking within, we get to create our sacred worlds in our own way. And so it's really important for me to make sure that everyone is getting this information and integrating it, because I believe that's the most important thing we can do to heal ourselves right now. Um, but you know, I'm a little biased, but that's just what I believe. <laughs> so let me go back to Cordelia's questions. Cause she's got a great question here. So basically what we're looking at is these four quadrants in the advanced charts. Okay. If, um, and again, I'm going to pull your guys' charts up in just a minute, but we have the, on the right hand side where it's the sun, earth design have digestion over here we have the design nodes which are environment on the right hand side we have the sun and earth personality which as you guys know the sun and earth personality are a large portion 70 percent right a large portion of who you are and it's because the sun and the earth have such a big impact on us, right? The earth and the sun obviously have a big impact on who we are, the neutrinos. And this is where the motivation is coming from. Within motivation, it has the transference. So the transference isn't one of these, but the transference is sort of like the flip side of your motivation. It's like your dark side, right? You're not self theme to the motivation. And then the perspective is sort of um, your cognitive perception is this part here, which is the personality nodes, okay? So the number that we're looking at today is this little interesting symbol with the six in it. So this is my chart and this is my motivation, which is, which is color six. Does that make basic sense to everybody? Now, the four arrows, which are these arrows here, where they're going over to the right, or they're going over to the left or to the right, the four areas are called variable. The variable is determined by the tones. And these little triangles are called tone. So where's the six? This six is right here. It's coming from this mathematical equation that gives us the six it's color so base tone color so the line line number goes to base tone color and this is color this is what we're looking at is color and this one's the tone okay so the variables are going to pull to the right or the left if it's um depending on So the, the arrows are gonna pull to the right or the left, depending on the number of the tone. So if you'll notice here on this chart, it's five, five, 
And so anything that's four, five, or six, it goes to the right. And the right is about passive, which over here, if it's one, two, or three, it's gonna move to the left. Um, so I have three right arrows and one left. It basically means that I take information or in peripherally, I take everything in. Um, those people with right brains take everything in. Left is a little more logical. It's a little more based in the past. It's a little more focused. We're not going to go into this all today. I just want to kind of give you guys the basics so you know what we're talking about here. Because I noticed that when I am researching stuff, I need to break it down so it makes sense, so it's simple. And when people just start spouting all this stuff off, and I'm like, wait a minute where are these numbers coming from? Base tone, color, what? So this is how I like to do it, okay? So this is how I like to break it down. So yeah, so this one, on this particular chart, it's three to the right and one to the left. Okay, so today we're focusing on motivation. We're focusing on this, it's the color, and mine is in the six, so it's the six color. And these are the four radical transformations. So once again, for those of you guys who do not know your motivation, um, and here's the thing, I'm gonna do a caveat again, is that if I don't have your chart already done, I'm not gonna be able to figure it out right now. Okay, so if you do not, and, and just so you guys know, we have, how many people do we have? We have 34 people on the call. So, um, so type in if you do not know, and right now we're only looking at your motivation. So let's go through some, some people, and then we're going to dive into the, um, what this stuff all means. So we have Allison is, dun, 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 okay. So we need to know the motivation and then the transference. And make sure you write this down correctly because you don't wanna get these two wrong. <laughs> so your motivation is desire and your transference is innocence. Your motivation is desire, your transference is innocence. Um, the color defines your motivation, yes, yes. So the reason why I'm telling you guys to make sure you don't get it backwards is because you're going to hear similar words, but it's the, it's very important that you know which one is motivation and which one is transference. You guys got what I'm saying there? So you want to make sure you get that right. Don't mix that up. Where'd it go? There we are. So did, you get, did I get everybody? You guys all good? You got it all? Okay. So you ready to dive into what all this means now? Now we get into the juicy stuff, right? Okay, so let's talk about it. Oh my God, I love this stuff so much, you guys. Okay, so here we are, everybody. This is how this stuff operates, okay? We have fear with the transference of need, hope with the transference of guilt, desire with the transference of innocence, need the transference of fear, guilt, the transference of hope, and innocence, transference of fear. So let's go through some of these names and how these archetypes work. Um, the fear is the teacher. Hope, the theist, anti-theist, the guru. The desire is the priests and the preachers. The need is the master, the prophet. The guilt are the messengers. The innocence is the observers and the Buddhas. Now, before we go into this, I need you guys to understand this, that motivation, we bounce from motivation to transference moment to moment. So you can really, really feel this. <clears throat> Hopefully the people with desire, which is um, <coughs> what we're going to talk about today, we're going to, um, you guys will start to see this in your lives. So the motivation will be your true self, and yet most people, and most people in the world, most of the time, are operating out of transference. Now, when I look at this, and I look at my transference, my entire 20s, um, not only was it the total not self of my projector, but it was 150% in my transference, plus some. 
So most people are horrified to see their transference because it's shocking. And it is a very, very, very important signpost. So be gentle on yourself as you witness it. Now, here's the thing. I am constantly going to move in and out of, um, of innocence and desire. And they're both part of me. And they're both important for me to move in and out of and to witness. But you have to use it and witness it properly. Cordelia says, I've always suspected I was driven by guilt. Now I have the proof. Exactly, right? Exactly. Um, yep, exactly. And you know what? We're going to give you the insights on how to really see it so you can move out of living by guilt, okay? Um, so the transference would be the guilt, right? Or the motivation is guilt. So if you're living out of guilt, then it's, okay, so let me explain it. Guilt is not what we think. So, um, and so if you've been living out of guilt, that's actually the right thing for you, right? That's the right thing for you. But let me explain what guilt means before you get worried about it. Kind of thought I'd be egotistical to say I'm a prophet. Yeah, exactly, right? I know. I, um, but it's an archetype. It's an archetype. Okay, so it's good to, to, to feel into that. I'm a Jew after all. Oh, we've got a lot of Jews on the call. I'm a Jew too. <laughs> we were born with guilt, integrated into our blood. We were pumped, we were pumped with it, right? Yep. <laughs> I'm a bad Jew. My guilt is my transference. <laughs> exactly. Oh my God, this is the best. So funny, right? Well, look, Christians have a lot of guilt too, right? there's there's no shortage of guilt over there um it's different but right okay so my whole life i've been living out of fear so let me explain one thing so even by me just saying the words of motivation transference your body sort of gets it in a way um so it's just a very very interesting thing your body just sort of understands it, except guilt is a little bit harder because, um, and so let me just do a quick, before I dive in, I'm going to dive very deeply into this, okay? But I want to just start with giving you guys just the basics for those of you who are wondering the basics, right? So the basics of fear is that if you are doing what people need you to do, um, that is your transference. Oh, they need me to do this. They need me to do that. That's your transference. Fear is you're meant to be a teacher and fear you're meant to move into the things that are inspiring you. Fear is oftentimes about the things that you don't know is what you fear. And so you're going to be wanting to learn. So it's a, it's a great researcher, right? It's a great teacher. Hope, right? The, the thing about hope and guilt is the one I want to just do a real brief thing about. Um, because you guys might be confused that hope um, is... The guilt isn't what we think it is. Guilt is about um, guilt is about taking personal responsibility for what needs to be fixed and then fixing it. Taking personal responsibility for what needs to be fixed and then fixing it. So if you have hope, you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to take personal responsibility and fix things. You're supposed to sit back and look into hope is the one that knows what will change, what's meant to change, what's not meant to change, but they are not meant to be the fixers. Okay? So that's exactly it, honey. That's exactly it. And need and fear. So here's the thing about this is the, the prophet, the need, the master, they, they, um, you know, they know what they need to do. But the fear is oftentimes so incredibly amplified that it's almost like this crazy fear. So when we think of fear, fear is, when fear is your motivation, it's a great teacher. That means you lean towards what scares you and you act on that. Something that's inspiring for you, right? You act on that. You're, you know, that's what you're here to do. But um, most people are living in their transference with fear. And these are like, Un, these are fears that have make no sense. These are fears that are completely unreliable fears. They're blown out of proportion fears. They're crazy fears, irrational fears. 
Um, they, and that's what most people are living in. And then we have guilt, um, which is what you're, when those people who have guilt, they are meant to fix things. They are meant to be the ones to fix things, but they're the ones living in hope. Oh, if I just, um, in this lottery and I hope things will change and I hope I can do it, but they're the ones who are not supposed to hope. They're the ones who are supposed to friggin' just fix it. No hoping, just do it. And then the innocence is living out of desire. Desire are meant to be the leaders. Um, and they're the desire are meant to go after what they want. Unfortunately, all of the Buddhas who are meant to be in innocence are living out of desire. Okay. They're the ones who are pushing. And, we, you know, like when you see motivational speakers pushing with an agenda, this is life changing shiz, right? Right? Amy? Totally. I missed a couple of, um, I missed a couple of, um, chats. I just want to let you know, but I want to get through this Intel. So I apologize. I'm going to go back and read through all of the, um, chats. And for instance, yeah, I'm going to cover everything. Don't you worry. But that was what I wanted to tell you guys is that here's the deal. We're going to go deep into each one of these, but I can only do one at a time. Right. But I wanted to give you the basics because, and I'll give you the recording so you can look back over it. But I wanted to give you the basics. Today, we're going to dive in to desire. And there's a reason why. Okay, you have to understand that motivation starts with desire. So desire is a part of each one of these motivations. Okay, so this is, think about it. Motivation is under the surface, right? It's under the surface. Motivation is what's driving your strategy and authority. Motivation is what is um, pushing you to do things or not do things. I'm absolutely grateful for buying this program. The best present I ever gave myself. Thank you for every single word. Oh, Diana, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm loving you as well. Thank you for that. Yeah. If you guys want the slides, I can do that for you. Um, affirm new affirmations. I know what I need to do and I'm here to do it. That's exactly it, Megan. That's it, girl. Don't let that fear, don't let that fear move you. Okay. So let's talk about your unique desire. The fear is correct to be motivated by desire to know, desire to know like what's out there. I'm afraid of it. Well, you need to know that. Okay. Hope, desire for something to happen or not happen. That is good. Desire for something to happen or not to happen. Happen. Um, desire is locked into a desire for your life. Get them aligned to their own desire, but also desire is to focus on other people's desires, like a motivational speaker. That's to inspire other people's desires. Um, need is desire to fulfill needs. Desire to fulfill needs. Guilt is the desire to fix things, restore things. What can I do to fix this now? Hope is motivated by a desire for something to happen or not. And innocence is the lack of desire. Okay, so what that means is that our desire people are oftentimes living in the innocence. Living in the lack of desire, okay? Whoa, a big realization just popped in for me, right? Do you guys get that? It is. It's po It's like body, like, like there's like a wah, 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 right? That starts to happen with this stuff. So everybody who is desire, type in the chat, okay? Because we're going to go into yours. So desire people, we're going deep in. So everybody who's desire, that means your motivation is desire. I so needed to hit Hannah. Yes, you did. You have been on my mind, actually. You and Keiko. Okay. So I don't I don't think Keiko is here, but I hope she's listening to the recording because both of you guys are desire. And this is really important for both of you guys. <laughs> um, right? Me already, aha moments. Okay, good. Allison, Judy is desire. Hannah's desire. Um, who else? We, I think we have a couple more desire. Who else is desire here? Good. Good. So you guys can let us know. We want to hear from desire people. Okay. Now, mode, um, innocence also, this is important for you because this is your transference. Okay. It's your transference. 
which means that this is not healthy for you, right? But let's start with the desire people. So we want to see if this resonates. So the desire people, this is the heart of all motivation. When they are, when they are in their transference, they may feel like they have been guided by the mind to just stay out of it. It has nothing to do with you. Don't worry, don't lead, no agenda. So that's what your motivation is telling you to do. Your motivation is saying, don't worry about it. Don't have an agenda. Um, this isn't about you. Um, that kind of thing. But these people, all of you desire people, you're supposed to have an agenda for everything. Okay, this is the power of cognition to be leaders. There is an instinct in this group um, that they, okay, so the instinct is to give their leadership to somebody else. So when they're in, let's say, even just a group going out to dinner, they would be the ones to kind of transfer the, the leadership to someone else. But these are the people who are supposed to be leading and supposed to be in charge. And they're supposed to be in their desire. They're supposed to do this, okay? They're supposed to share with people and speak about what they're desiring and the power of motivation. And it's a natural motivational speaker. And to tell other people about their desire, right? The reason we have an aversion to motivational speakers is because usually it's innocence, people in their innocence acting out of transference. <laughs> oh my God. And guess what? Like, this is, this is me. Okay. So that's why I need to show, and this is my entire business. When I showed up in my webinars and was selling, even though that's what I was trained to do, it never worked for me. It never worked for me. When I showed up and just taught and served and just showed up and, and, and showed up, my business boomed. No agenda for an innocence. Agenda for the desire people. Okay? So when you have desire, it's very important to always make an agenda to always make an agenda. <laughs> Interesting, right? Can you clarify what your M and T are motivation and transference? Yeah, so the motivation, so the motivation is who you should be living as. So in other words, people in desire should be living as desire. Oh, mine is, yeah, so I'm innocent. I'm innocence. So when I'm in my desire, it's inappropriate for me. Okay. So when I'm in my desire and I'm not living in my innocence, it Fs me up big time. And yet, if you look back at my 20s, it was all driven by desire, huge success, desire to go for it. Um, yeah, you're opposite of me. Right. Exactly. So that I'm talking about me as the opposite. Thank you for making me clarify that because I'm this is my transference, okay? So for you guys, absolutely not. You're supposed to go for it. You're supposed to go for it. I feel like I'm aligning huge with my hope now, right? You can feel it, right? You can feel it in your body, right? You can start to feel this stuff. It's deep. For desire people, I wanted to tell you about Ra Uruhu. Now, if you guys know Ra Uruhu's story, okay? He is the founder of Human Design, and his motivation is desire. If you know his life for until he was downloaded with this information, he was literally like doing drugs, living in Ibiza, having no agenda, having no clear direction in life. I mean, he was just wandering. That is the transference of desire is then relationships. Oh, you know, let's just see what happens. Let's see where this goes. And then life and people like pride themselves on this. Oh, I have no agenda. Don't worry about it. You know, that kind of thing. So the desire needs to ask, how can you further your goals? That's the question for you, desire people. It's very easy to get pulled into innocence, and innocence plays a role for you. Okay. Cause like I said, it goes back and forth. It's not that you're never going to get away from innocence. It's going to be a part of you. 
So you need to find out like who's worth leading. What is worth desiring? What do you want to go after? You'll go in and out of innocence all the time, just like I'm going to go in and out of desire all the time. And that's really important, um, right? It's very important to know both sides. Um, but the important thing is like for me, even though I have a lot of desire, my important thing is to show up in my innocence. And for you, the important thing is to show up into your desire, to lock into it and then go for it. Lock into your desire and then go after it. So these people can be super flexible with their agenda if they're an innocent. So flexible agenda is not right for you, okay? So you want to continually get support to go after goals are important. Make appointments, make plans, take specific steps to track your goals. So does, here's another really important part of motivation is it shows us who our allies are. Is this, is this resonating with you, Alexander? That kept resonating very strongly, right? It's deep, right? So the other thing is, especially for this is for everyone. So here's another thing for everyone in desire. Someone asks you, who do you think you are to lead? Who are you to go after your goals? They're not your true allies. If people are asking you, what steps do you need to take to make your goal happen? People are going to either throw you off into transference or they're going to throw you on. Okay. They're going to throw you on. Cool awareness, right? If people are asking what steps do you need to make to make your goal happen, that's what you want to hear. That's what you want to hear. Do not, and this is for, for people who are coaching these people or, or in your family, right? So my BFF is desire can totally see now, right? You can see it. That's the crazy thing about this stuff. You immediately see it in people immediately you immediately start to see them in their transfer and powerful you i mean you can see this bigger than anything i mean now of course because you guys know i'm obsessed with this stuff and i'm so inspired by it i see it like everywhere and you guys know how that works with my stuff it's like once you go into it it's synchronicity and you just see it everywhere right don't worry we're gonna go into everybody's but we can't do it today as you guys know i set that up at the expectations in the beginning is that I'm not going to get to everybody's today. And you guys can get in the, the Facebook group and talk about it and share what's coming up for you and everything. So um, so we're going to go into each one of these in depth. And we're going to talk about this. It's helpful to learn about other people's. Yeah, because when you see these in everyone's charts, it's big. It's so big, guys. It's really helpful to go through everybody's. It really is. So you don't want to ask anyone who has desire what they've observed. Okay, so you don't want to ask them what they've observed because this throws them into being an observer. So our desire people are not here to observe. It's the innocence people that are here to observe. The innocents are supposed to watch and be the observer and be sort of the, 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 you know, the Buddhas and watching and being present. But the desire should be focused to do, to have for lunch. To, with their friends, for their business, for everything they do, they should be agenda-driven. And guess what? When you have desire people that aren't even, you can feel that something's a little off there. You know, it's like, it's really interesting. I do want you guys to know that we are going to go through everybody, so don't worry about it. We're going to go through each one of these. We're going to go in depth, but it's huge, right? It's huge. Um, so thank you so much for doing this. I already know it's life-changing, right? Isn't it powerful? Yeah, super big. So HD is so cool. Isn't it cool? Or oh, isn't it awesome? Yeah, thank you. I've got some good ideas for forward motion mo momentum now. Awesome. This is really exciting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my dear heart. Thank you. All right. So does anyone else have any questions? This is a gift for us all. You're amazing. I love it. It's really exciting. Oh, I know. It's so good, right? My quick question before you dive into hope, is it similar to innocence sitting back? So yeah, let's, so are you saying that we're all motivated by a desire and we just need to discover which desire is correct for us to live by? Yeah, exactly. We're all motivated except for innocence. Innocence doesn't really have desire, but desire is part of the motivation. That, that's a great way to say it though, right? Thank you. This really brings peace and understanding how to be my best self and why certain things turned out as they did. It really does, right, Lauren? So let me go back to your question for a minute about the hope. Um, 
and I'll stay a few minutes to answer any questions. So when we're looking at hope, when we're talking about hope and guilt, so what we have with hope and guilt is that the transference of guilt is that you take personal responsibility for everything and you're trying to fix it. So for example, let's say you're in a job and you, um, you see the problems that are going on there. And so what you're doing is taking over responsibility and trying to fix everything in that situation. Um, and you're, you're getting in there and you're meddling with everything and you're in there and you're fixing it. And you're, you're run by this thing to, that you need to fix everything, but you're not the fixer. You're meant to sit back and contemplate what is going to change, what's not going to change. And hope has a sense of knowing this. They're not here to meddle. They're not here to fix things. They're here to know what's going to change or not change. So there is sort of a sense of that, like a little bit of the innocence, like sit back. And it, it has that similar energy a little bit. Um, and then the guilt, actually, they are here. They are the fixers, right? Exactly. If there's something you can't fix, then you have to know what you can't fix, right? It's so draining, but I'm so compelled. Does that mean hope are here to not do anything, just hope it will change? So they're not here to fix things in the same way. Yeah, they're not here to fix things. And so they know what's going to change. When you sit back, um, does that mean if I know a situation is not fixable, leave the situation? Yeah, so hope is they are the theists, the gurus, right? So they are here to honestly know what's going to change and what's not going to change. They're here to sit back and know what's going to change, what's not going to change, and not fix the things that are not going to change. So there's a different energy in hope than but most people in hope are living out of guilt. So the most important thing is to know where you're living out of guilt, where you're living out of that. So once again, I promise you guys, we're going to go deeper into each one of these. Um, so I don't want to go too deep into all of them at this point, because we're not going to have the time to do that, but we're going to go through each one very deeply. Yeah. It's juicy stuff, right? This resonates deep in my bones with hope and guilt. Yeah. Yeah. It's deep, right? It's just so juicy. I know. I love it too. It's very fascinating, right? All right. So. Remember to stay in your abundance. Remember to open the doors of frequency and pay attention to your motivation. <laughs> so even though innocence is the observer, we can still sit in our frequency, um, allow that abundance in. All right, do you guys wanna just show up on video one more time and say goodbye? Bye everybody. <laughs> There's Alexander. Here. Do you want to say hi, Davidian? Hi. You got to put your face in the camera. Oh, yeah, but I'm a sweaty mess, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> hi, hey. guys. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the, where Look at, at everybody's videos. You can see everybody here. Davidian, what, what's your motivation? What's my motivation? Well, need. He's need. And oh, he's yeah. the opposite. Of yeah, me. It's really, you know what? I'm prone to something called negative escapism. Um, sure. Do you want to see? Which <laughs> I'd have to compare notes with, um, with other people who have need and fear as the transference. Because, like, I always have these weird negative daydreams. He does. Where I just, I actually get transported to a scenario where I'm actually, it's like a waking dream. And it's, it's like my cross to bear. It's really gnarly. So uh. the whole scenario would be, okay, I'm sitting at the bank and I, I go through something and someone busts through the door and what would I do if this happened and this happened and my brain goes through all the scenarios. Oh, I'd do this first and then I'd do this and then this is how I would get out of it. Always. Wow. It's really not pleasant, but better that than actually experiencing it, I guess, but... <laughs> so we can really can sense where where the fear is. Bye, you guys. Um, stay safe. <laughs>
my dream brain does it. Does anyone else do that? That's great. So we're going to hear from you guys and we're going to go deeper, but I hope this was a good inf introduction to you guys. And I hope you guys are as excited as I am about the Intel. So I'll see you guys in the Facebook group. Yeah. Mwah.